radio and television stations have given free airtime. There's a problem about the air, the water, and the earth. It's being ruined. That's what Earth Week is all about. What it's all about is trying to convince everyone in Philadelphia that industrial activity like this has serious drawbacks as well as advantages. And the Earth Week committee wanted to reach more than just students. They wanted help from people like Mrs. Rita Cugini, the wife of a fireman in southwest Philadelphia. Mrs. Cugini did become involved in Earth Week. When you think about it, when you walk around your own neighborhood, what do those words mean to you? It means a horrible smell from the nearby refineries. It means open burning by our auto junkyards. It's burned out grass. And the trees that we have, few and far between, are dwarfed. And that's about it. Sulfur dioxide. You know, I've studied the technical aspects so that pollution to me is technically sulfur dioxide and particulates and nitrogen dioxide which is uh, a poison which i don't think my children should have to breathe it's bad it frightens me totally uh my oldest son uh wasn't born here we were farther up north and uh, that was uh, almost a year and a half two years ago that we moved here ever since we have been in southwest and this isn't paranoia or imagination but since we've been down here he has colds frequently and my youngest son, who's only a year old, has never been without a cold. You know, a week at a time, 10 days at a time, he's all right. And then the sniffles begin again. The only thing that's here that he could possibly have this reaction to is the uh, air problem, the lack of oxygen, yeah. and surplus of everything else. What sort of reaction do you get from your neighbors? You go and talk to them about ecology and air pollution. How do they react? I can't get across the point that About this, the, the port, which is rain, mostly yeah. invisible, the problem is mostly invisible, even though they do see black smoke, and even though they have to uh, wipe their windowsills three times a day, they still don't understand that this is affecting their lungs, so that we don't ever fully discuss the problem. It's just diverted to something else. In other words, you think that they've simply become accustomed to pollution? Immune, <laughs> immune psychologically and accustomed to it, to the odors and to the sight of it. It doesn't upset them anymore. One of the things Mrs. Cugini did for Earth Week was to help college students promote a pollution bus tour. Your bank uh, accepted this poster to be put up so that the people would see it. It's an Earth Week activity, the Philadelphia Pollution Trail Bus Tour, in which the people are going to get a very close up, solid look at all the chemicals spewing out of our industrial boilers and all of the gases pouring out that they don't seem to realize yet are going to kill them. We want the people involved, so this is to show them the chemicals coming out, to show them that it isn't stopping and that they have to fight to make it do so. It's a very depressing ride, but it's meant to be. And even the churches were prepared to do something about the depressing condition of the city's air and water. This was the Salem-Zion United Church of Christ and its pastor, Paul Hetrick, on Sunday. The church also is involved in Earth Week because some of its poor theology has helped to cause the ecological imbalance that we are facing in nature today. We have always, for the last several hundred years, addressed ourselves to the theme of progress as a theological principle. And we have believed and affirmed that those people who do progress, God certainly is blessing. And because we have progressed and not thought about the ways, the methods that we were using in order to progress, to grow into our technological expertise, we have plundered, we have raped, we have begun to lay the earth in desolation. We have helped to foul up your air, pollute your streams, and clutter your earth with trash and gadgets. And we have destroyed many of your living creatures. 
Your forests have been cut down and the Earth's resources plundered without concern for the generations and the times to come. Now our hearts are heavy with sorrow for what we have done, but not before our sinuses and lungs warned us of great dangers and our eyes told us that some of the beauty has gone out of your Earth. 